Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and the beautiful gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Lai instructs Finn to end their relationship with Sheila. Lai went to the cliff house to see her son. Finn felt happy. Despite talking to Steffi and the kids as frequently as he could on the phone, he claimed that the house was vacant. Lai argued that Sheila was to blame for everything and then inquired about Steffi. Finn commented that it was challenging to gauge because the children were often there for all of their calls with Steffi. Lee pleaded with her son to tell Steffi how much he loved her, how he would protect her, and how Sheila wouldn't be an issue if she came home. Lai highlighted that getting in touch with Sheila would permanently oust Steffi. Lai was adamant that Sheila wouldn't listen to Finn and claimed that Finn had the intelligence to see that Steffi would have found it intolerable if he had opened up to Sheila. Even worse, Sheila would never leave Finn since he had given her hope. Lai exhorted him to resolve the situation on his own. Finn, you have to stop her. You need to take some action that ensures Steffi never again has to worry about Sheila, Lai said. Lay made a suggestion that he'd already had one chance to let Sheila die when Finn questioned what that meant. Like every other patient, Sheila had to be saved, Finn retorted. Sheila hadn't been any other person, Lai retorted, and it had been personal. Finn reaffirmed his promise to act with no malice and stated that if he had, it would have violated everything he had stood for and the way he had been brought up. He believed it would have turned him into one as well. It would have made Finn a hero, Lai retorted. She encouraged him to act and find a method to persuade Steffi that Sheila would never pose a threat once more in order to save his family, or he would lose them for good. Lee scolded Finn and urged him to put more effort towards defending Steffi. Finn responded that Steffi didn't want to go to Lai when Lai told him to. Lai attributed it to Sheila, who ruined everything in her path. Lai yelled that she was Finn's mother despite the fact that Sheila had given birth to him. She attended his soccer games and read him stories. Lai asserted that she had comforted and cuddled Finn when he had experienced his first heartbreak. Lai claimed that she had pushed him to become the best man he could be and to pursue a career in medicine. Lai was his mother in every sense of the term, according to Finn, who claimed he never minimized her. Sheila had no right to Finn's heart, Lai argued. Love belonged to her. In spite of this, Finn claimed to adore Lai. Lai yelled, Why did you let Sheila in? In an uproar. Both Sheila and Finn denied that Finn had done either. Lai claimed that he had greeted Sheila with thanks and hugs and had addressed her as mom. Sheila would never go as long as Finn loved her, Lai claimed. Lai advised him to look deep inside discover the twisted link to her, and severe it completely. Hope and Douglas hugged at the design studio, and she suggested they go get something to eat. He requested whether his dad might accompany him. She indicated to Thomas standing in the entranceway and said Douglas could ask himself. Inquiring as to how long Thomas had been there, Douglas turned around. Thomas stated that he had heard what Douglas had said and that he found it admirable that his son could put his past mistakes behind him. Thomas claimed that Douglas was unaware of the significance for him of hearing Douglas state that he had changed. Hope said it was a crucial lesson to understand that one may develop, change, and find forgiveness. Douglas claimed that in order for Thomas and Hope to have a family, he had urged Hope to do that. Douglas convinced his father that he had told Hope that he had come up with the idea on his own, independently of Thomas. Douglas said he hated that Hope was feeling so depressed, and that he knew it was because Liam had left. But as a family, we can work to remedy it. Okay, Dad. Thomas pretended to enjoy the sentiment behind Douglas' words, but Thomas didn't believe Hope needed additional pressure. Hope assured her that everything would be oak and never discounted how much it meant to Douglas. And notice regarding seeing Hope's father rang on her phone. Although Thomas claimed he and Douglas would be fine if she left, she insisted it could wait. Hope assured Douglas that they will always be a family before leaving. 
Sheila attempted to seduce Deacon while they were in his house, but he rejected her advances. She said that his body was communicating a different message. Deacon pulled away from her, adamant that it was improper. She assumed he wanted to behave well, but she lamented the fact that she enjoyed him much more when he was mischievous. Deacon gave in to her seductive kiss. Sheila later claimed that she was aware of the predicament Deacon was in. Although Deacon claimed that was the first time he had something to lose, he still cared about her. She claimed that even though she didn't feel deserving of them, she appreciated everything he had done for her. He claimed that he risked losing his daughter if anyone learned about him. Sheila claimed to understand Deacon's sentiments toward Hope because she felt a similar bond with Finn. She claimed that Deacon had struggled to find acceptance as well. Deacon reasoned that it was distinct and that neither the uphill struggle nor the shooting episodes had occurred. Sheila, upset that Deacon kept bringing up the shootings, assured Finn that she loved him dearly and that she had never injured him on purpose. Sheila assured Finn that she would be present in his life once Steffi was gone. Deacon remembered Finn saying he didn't want to see Sheila ever again. Steffi had been standing there, but now that she was gone, there were no difficulties, Sheila retorted. Because Finn would always go with his wife and family, Deacon recommended Sheila to pay attention to what he was saying. Sheila said that Finn loved her while Deacon claimed that he adored Steffi. When she was in his embrace, she could feel their unbreakable tie. She claimed that he had chosen to give her a hug of his own volition and because she was his mother. Deacon expected Finn to be conflicted, but he insisted that Finn's wife and family would come first. Steffi had left with the kids, and Sheila yelled that she wasn't loving Finn the way she ought to. Not the way I do it, Sheila replied. She argued that unlike Steffi, she didn't make him fight for her affection. Sheila speculated that Finn was suffering, but he didn't need to because he had his mother, she remarked. She believed that a breakthrough was imminent and vowed to persevere. Deacon hinted that it was a little strange when Sheila started to compliment Finn. She questioned why she wasn't able to admire his child, but he could. Deacon explained that he loved Hope and couldn't continue acting in the same way with Sheila because of that. He was afraid of losing the eatery. He inquired as to Sheila's opinion of his losing it. She promised not to. Deacon believed that Hope needed him and that he couldn't risk it or screw it up. Sheila questioned what Daddy was saying while grinning, hoping her father was at home. Hope rapped on the door and turned the knob at that same moment. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.